Guys, today we're going to do a video talking about Chris Reeve knives and should you buy one. Now, the reason why I'm doing this video is because near every week in the knife forums that at least I'm a part of, I see this question come up, whether it's, you know, like it's usually different forums, but almost every week I see this question come up and that is, should you buy a Chris Reeve knife? Now, I think part of that is because Chris Reeve knives, um, whether we like it or not, have kind of become mainstream. They're almost, at least in my thought process, I'm sure some people will correct me on this one, but in my thought process, they're kind of like the high-end version of Benchmade, even though Benchmade tries to be high-end with things like the Narrows being so expensive, even more expensive than something like this, um, which is definitely not a good idea. But anyways, for me, like Chris Reeve is kind of um, like a luxury brand where, you know, they're very, they have a lot of notoriety and it's a lot of generally good press. Uh, but undoubtedly with that, you know, a lot of people who, you know, maybe bought a Civivi or especially people who have bought like a Wii or a Riate, maybe a few of them, you know, are wondering like, you know, they've bought a few two, three hundred dollar knives and they're like, you know, should I step up? Should I buy a four, five, six hundred dollar knife? So in this video, I thought I would kind of do like my response. Of course, in those threads, I usually comment and say, hey, you know, like I own four Chris Reeves. I love them all and they've all been really good performers, but I wanted to dive a little bit more into it and talk more than just face value about Chris Reeves knives. So the reason why I do generally recommend them is for a handful of reasons. And I think the first one off for me is that in undoubtedly like something that plays a role for me, even though it may not for you, is the heritage. All of these knives can draw their lineage back to the Sebenza, whether it's an Umnumzon, an Inkosi, or a legitimate Sebenza itself. They've been through many iterations and they have such a good heritage. But the other thing that I think goes hand in hand with that heritage heritage is especially your Nkosis, your, um, your Sebenzas, and I would say even your Umnumzons is this level of timelessness. Now, undoubtedly, there are other knives out there like the Benchmade 940, the Griptilians, even others that are newer that are fairly timeless, but undoubtedly like this, let's just say the Strider SNG, right? There are some people, and this definitely has a cult following, but the Strider SNG is not as popular as it used to be. And honestly, I think a lot of people look at it nowadays. It's big, it's almost rectangular, it's boxy. You know, no one really likes the Strider SNG anymore. Now, I like mine personally. Personally, I think it works just fine and I don't have any issues. But, you know, with designs like that, with even the Hinderer XM18, there's no doubt that, you know, like Hinderer has come out with things like the Project X because they need to redesign, right? Sebenza, or I should say Chris Reeve, is the only one that really hasn't had to do that because the Nkosi, the Sebenza, the Umnumzon, they've all been out at least 10 years. The Umnumzon came out in 2013, um, but before that, you know, the Sebenzas are decades old. I mean, Sebenza 31 literally stands for its 31st year as a Sebenza, right? Like th that's the 31st anniversary of the Sebenza. That's why it's called the Sebenza 31 or the Sebenza 21 or the Sebenza 25. All of those uh, iterations just de denotate how old or different anniversaries of the Sebenza. So they're very old designs, right? But they still remain largely unchanged. I think, as I've said before, things like the Sebenza are like the Porsche 911 of the knife world. And that is because the Porsche 911 has the same basic shapes that it's always had. It, even through like the pop-up headlight phase or fad of the 1980s and 90s, the Porsche 911 never got pop-up headlights, right? Even when things like the Corvette, the Camaro, um, the Mustangs, like all of these other companies, they all gave into these trends and fads and they aged like fine milk, right? So that's why I think that like the Sebenza and most Chris Reeve knives as a whole are really good knives. They're very, very timeless. And when a Chris Reeve makes a new knife, they don't make a new knife carelessly. It takes them years of design and iteration and prototypes to finally bring it to bear. So they make really solid knives. Now, a lot of people at, may ask me, you know, like, what do either of those first two things that I just talked about have anything to do with, so like, why would those persuade me to get a Sebenza or a Nkosi or an Umnumzon? The biggest reason I will say is that these knives have some of the highest value retention of any knife company out there 
by and large. And I will say like, there are some knife companies that, you know, they go through highs, they go through lows. Like, let's just talk about, um, the Grismo Norseman, right? The Grismo Norseman was a really fad kind of knife through the COVID pandemic. But nowadays you look at Grismo Norsemans and the resale market on them is trash, right? Well, you look at a Chris Reeve, whether like it's an Omnum Zani, Kosi Sabenza, whatever, the resale market on them is very, very consistent. Like you can sell an Omnum Zon, you can sell, like I could sell this Omnum Zon right now for pretty much what I paid for it, right? Like I could sell this for 450, 500 bucks easily. I could sell my Sabenza easily for similar prices. My Nkosi easily for similar prices that what I paid or to what I paid for it. And that is because the value retention is there, partly because of that heritage, like I mentioned, partly because of its timeless design. These things just don't look bad, right? Like these things just keep on looking good. And at the same time too, another thing that adds to that resale value is their incredible build quality. Oftentimes I love pulling my uh, Chris Reeve knives out, any of them for guys to look at, because even if you're not a knife guy, if you have that kind of engineering mindset, or you just really appreciate the attention to detail, the, you know, craftsmanship, any um, Chris Reeve is going to look really good. You're going to be able to look at it in honestly not find any faults. And that is one of the biggest things of why people love Chris Reeve knives is when you like, let's say, uh, so let's just take for instance, disassembly. It's not only recommended, but encouraged by um, Chris Reeve. They send you the tools to literally disassemble your knife when you get the package for your knife, right? So it's a really big thing. And when you're reassembling your knife or even taking it apart, you will see how tight and close tolerances these things are. Like they are fitted very well. Like with some knives, like let's just say a Benchmade, you know, there's a little bit of slop in the pivot screw. There's a little bit of slop in things. With these guys, there is literally no slop. Like that thickness of the bolt that goes through that, you know, particular standoff, for instance, or pivot, whichever you'd like, is exactly like you have to line it up exactly to how it needs to be. It will not move. It will not go in without it being perfect. And so it's those levels of manufacturing that when you take a look at a knife like this, whether you flick it open, you know, you examine it, these things just look so darn perfect. Like this is machining excellence. There's no slop in anything and it just fits like a glove. And that's where the Sabenza originally got the kind of connotation of that bank vault lockup is because it just feels like everything goes into place perfectly every time. So those are really kind of important things that um, Chris Reeve really prides themselves on. And like I said, all of those things really lead to a higher value retention. So even if you do get a Chris Reeve and say you don't like the Umnums on, right? You can honestly sell it for what you paid for it pretty much instantly. And the best thing is, like I've said before, you know, these things by and large really don't decrease in their value or in their resale value at all. And that's really a testament to the quality of the manufacturing and the, the pride that people take in owning Chris Reeve knives. And undoubtedly, you know, I do have other knives that sometimes I prefer to carry more, but these guys are really freaking bang up. They are awesome. They're very well thought out. Even things like um, with all of their Chris Reeve knives, for years they've had like little drilled holes in their pivots to retain um, things like KPL or whatever pivot lube you're using that um, these little holes retain the, that lube to help with lubricity and a smooth action. And so literally everything on a Chris Reeve knife has been thought out to the highest extent possible to deliver a product that is over-engineered, but in the best way possible. So anyways, I'm not necessarily saying you need to go down and throw mad money, you know, like drop five, six hundred dollars on a Chris Reeve knife. However, if you do, or if you are considering taking the steps towards getting a Chris Reeve, these are some of the reasons why I think they're worth it. And I think that they're by and large, really, really solid offerings for knives. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.